Radio Trade. This is Don Kaufman. October 20th, 2021. Three minutes to go inside of the cash session. S&P's completely sloptastic today. Grinding to the upside. And literally right into the upper edge of the SPX expected move. I'm going to tell you, we're going to look at that in quite some detail this evening. Because, well... The upper edge of the expected move, that is literally going to define the remainder of this trading week. First, we start here inside of the S&P futures, which uh, I said are absolutely sloptastic. They're up again, point, you know, 0.28%, which is not much of a trading session. The NASDAQ is actually off, oh, just about 36 handles or 0.2%. Um, the volume today is just absolutely anemic inside of the S&Ps. And I'm going to tell you exactly why. The entire trading session today came down, okay, to this morning launching into the upper edge of the expected move. Now, for those of you, okay, that do look at the expected moves. Now, this is, this is something I detail, okay, each and every weekend. We talk expressly about What's the expected move for the week? And if if you miss that number, obviously, you know, I continually share these are hand-drawn expected moves. As I said, I kind of continually share these. But if you miss that and you are on the Thinkorswim platform, and, you know, this could also be done on Tastyworks. But here on Thinkorswim, you go to the Analyze tab and you go to Think Back. And in terms of Think Back, all right, all you would have to do is just take a look back, you know, today's the 20th, just look over, you know, like the weekend, like what happened, you know, on Friday's close, okay? So we can go ahead and we can click onto, uh, you know, Friday's close and what that would give you is effectively the expected move. Seven days out, you would see the expected move is about $61 and change, right? So effectively what I'm saying is, okay, literally on from Friday's close, the marketplace, okay, a week out is anticipating about a $61 move and we're on it. And once we actually hit the upper edge of that expected move, which is precisely what we did, I mean, pretty much out of the gate today, we, uh, we hit the upper edge of the expected move. Then for the most part, we are relegated to, well, quite the uh, sloptastic trading session. There doesn't need to be a lot of hedging activity all right, inside of the S&P futures once we actually hit the upper edge of this expected move. And it's something that I just talk about kind of incessantly. There's another critical aspect that cannot be overstated with the upper edge of this expected move or, you know, any given week's expected move. And here we come, of course, into the closing bell. If you take a look, all right, at the most recent rally in this marketplace, which has just been a, you know, blistering move to the upside. But one of the points that really needs to be made, because you're, you're, you know, hearing a lot of stuff in the media and it's an unprecedented rally, if you will, to the, uh, to the upside, but there's nothing unprecedented about it. The previous week, what did we do? We literally hit the upper edge of the expected move. Where are we right now? Sitting on the upper edge of the expected move. Now, the reason I said this is going to define the marketplace, okay, for the remainder of the week, and that's a feel that I, I absolutely want to give you. Now, I know that there's some earnings coming out after the bell, and you know we're going to hear from the likes of IBM, but there's, there's nothing really per se that's going to be a market-moving event in terms of earnings coming out. However, the one really critical aspect, okay, that I want everybody to kind of grip hold here is this, all right? The upper edge of this expected move sits right around 4532. If we really start to propagate gains above that, getting into for instance like 45, you know, 45 inside of the SPX. And again, this is specific to the SPX. You start to get up to like 45 45 then people hedging activity can start to kick in. And in effect, what can happen is a wicked gamma squeeze. And that's why I'm telling you right now, this, this is what matters inside of markets. We start to project the upside, okay? 
And in effect, we can explode from this point up because what occurs outside of the edge of this expected move would be dynamic hedging. In effect, trading firms would have to turn around okay, and buy. What do they have to buy? They have to buy all right, Delta. Where do they buy Delta? Typically these S&P futures. As I said, one of the tells of today's trading session, there was no size in those S&Ps. There's no size in the S&Ps because nobody has to hedge when you're sitting on the happy place of risk. The happy place of risk is the upper edge of this expected move. That's kind of like a seam, if you will, all right, between option premium sellers and option premium buyers. And again, this can't be overstated simply because what is driving the overall market these days, okay, is massive, massive amounts of hedging activity. You need only look at like, you know, option statistics. 1.5 million SPX options traded. Okay, 1.5 million, you're like, ah, that's not too much, except that the options in the SPX are in a, you know, four thousand five hundred dollar product. It's huge in terms of notional value. So, you know, between 37, 38 million option contracts trade a day, but 1.5 million of those is in the SPX. Again, it really is. It's like the mother of all products. The second, again, that we cross, if you will, to the upside of that expected move just outside of it, it'll force firms, okay, that are caught in really negative gamma positions they have to buy and they're going to have to buy heavily inside of those S&P futures and buying can actually cause us into a squeeze. And if that is to occur, and again, I don't necessarily think we're getting up to 4,600, but it is critical because when you're on the edge of that expected move, everybody should be on the edge, right? Now, a bit of a conversation piece. We have seen volatility, okay, at really one of the lowest levels since the onset of COVID, but at the exact same time, we're actually seeing skew pick up quite dramatically, right? VVIX, VVIX has actually fallen under 110. There's just not a lot of commitment right now, okay, to number one to trade or number two to be buying volatility. Nevertheless, okay, one of the aspects that we have to think about, again, we get outside the edge of that expected move, volatility absolutely could fall further. The only real risk I think that's standing directly in front of us would be once again to see this bond market take a little bit more of a tumble. But the bonds have almost decoupled themselves to some degree from the notes. The notes start to sell off, okay? Interest rates pick up a little bit. And once again, you're seeing some degree of that impact happening literally today, where there's a couple odd stocks out, including like Google, which saw some sell side activity. Unusual to say the least that the sell side activity though, again, it seems compartmentalized, relegated, if you will, to just a handful of products, but at the same time, not per se pulling down the marketplace. Again, two critical aspects worth noting, just for the remainder, again, of this trading week. Got to watch the SPX. If it gets a decent amount outside, as I said, up to about 45, 45, specifically in the SPX, we could literally explode to the upside, right? But at the exact same time, a just a little bit more sell side activity in those bonds or notes, it might be just enough to kind of snap the back once again of technology and send us, all right, into a bit of a downward spiral. As I said, there's no real sign of volatility anywhere, okay, on the forefront, which actually, though, gives you an opportunity, hey, to get long volatility at this point in time. You don't wait until you see volatility. You get long volatility when you can. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here at Theo Trade. Have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.